There are so many people trying to find something to believe in. Only some are looking the wrong way. They tell me to believe in this, believe in that. But most don't even know for sure what they're doing or where they're going. Blind faith is good enough for them, just as long as it gets them by. We have a goal, a reason to try. It sounds like a lot like science. Knowledge is all we need. We'll prove it through fact. With all the intent, they miss and cannot see the overview of the nature of the spirit. When you're old and lonely, you will wish you'd married me. I could build a fire for you and bring you cakes and tea. A wandering spirit. Like smoke passing through the air. Some see it, smell it, but cannot feel it. The world home is right in front of you. Only you'll never see it with your eyes. You'll never touch it with your hands or feet. However, one can only feel it. So take heart, my dearest. It will be the longest road you'll ever know. That road home is 12 inches long. It is from your head to your heart. It sounds easy, but it is not. Fear stands at the door. Mary Spy Nagani. To be loved by somebody means to be cherished, uh, to be nurtured, to feel as though you matter to that person. It's that feeling of butterflies and the excitement and sweating and nervous and yeah, it's, it's um, a huge rush of joy and happiness beyond un no measure. I'd be swinging on a tire in a barn, just singing Bay City Roller songs, this and that, you know, just thinking about her and just having a good old time. I think it means to, to be loved by somebody is just to have somebody that you know cares about you in one way or another, just in general to have somebody that cares about you and cares about where you go and what you do and that you succeed in the things that you want to do. I think... The best way to put that for me is just if I'm going shopping for me, for example, I always have him in the back of my mind. And to be loved is just the same feeling. Just have him, me in the back of his mind. So. I guess it's a two-way street. It's them loving you and you loving them. But when I love someone, it's, I don't know, it's freedom. <laughs> I think homelessness has uh, impacted my experience of love or definition of love uh, very negatively. Um, like I mentioned before, any expression of, of love or compassion or empathy or, or any of those like soft emotions um, are, are considered a weakness. It's, but it, that's not just it. It's um, w when I was on the street, first ended up homeless, I was so hurt and so emotionally battered and so betrayed um, that my heart was the only thing I had left and I was, I'd be damned if I was going to let anybody have it. And I didn't want theirs either because, because of those events that led up to me being homeless, I had this belief that, that, um, everything, everything came with a string attached, you know, in, including especially love. Um, and a lot of people who said that they loved me through my childhood, um, who abused me, um, um, help form that, that tainted version of what I consider to be true love, right? You just kind of, I guess, time and place for everything when it comes down to it. Um, shelters aren't the greatest place to start a relationship in the first place, but I guess everybody's got to feel that love somewhere. There's also just that privacy that's involved with being in a shelter. It's, well, the lack of privacy, um, especially with a couple being in the shelter because they don't look at us as a couple, they look at us as you're this bed number, right? So it's a little difficult because you're also in a room with a whole bunch of girls or he's in a room with a whole bunch of guys and there's not that 
really in between space that everyone can just kind of connect. So that way it was difficult. My intimate friend, so sit anywhere. No warm meal? Let's pretend. Law one, lock in your feet. House of God invites us pray. Hey, wait, no, can't stay. We gracefully go, shared shower and shit. Watch Joe doing blow, a shelter hot holiday. Ten through, meal line shortens. So what, they're just orphans. What the hell, we'll survive. Can't laugh, can't cry, don't yell, don't sigh. Everyone's asleep, floodgates from birdseed diet. You catch a reflection, can't stand with that section. Don't you like what you see? The glow from the one lying here next to me. Hell, stop your confession. Some love the violence, I shrink into silence. Your throat is all tight, your eyes just can't look. No end to the fight, it's denial or abstinence. Home is still a figure of speech, his party won't play. We're back at the beach, this famous disgrace. A great healing place, my sweet child's embrace. You know it's okay. Young wind is back. Old sun, a red ray. I'll call it our space. I think... Yeah, the biggest person I love is is myself. Um, everybody else kind of comes second to me because I always have to make sure that I'm good to go with everything that I'm doing because I can't expect anybody else to do anything that I believe is right if I don't truly believe that it's right. Um, How can you love others without loving yourself first too? Stuff like that, right? Thank you. Yeah, ex exactly. My daughter, yeah, without any doubt. I would do anything for her, anything. And it kills me, it kills me not being in her life right now. I just try not to think about it, it's, yeah. My two kids are really important to me. When I hit bottom and I thought about them, I was able to keep going because I knew that they were, they were part of my world, my, uh, and that I would be a part of theirs. It's a different kind of love, I feel. Um, like I really would, I really would give my life up for my children. I have no, no fear about that. Friends in general, they've been the people I've loved the most since childhood, really, because I didn't really have that uh, bond with my foster parents. It was always like I was one step below the natural children, so I sought family and friends. I, I love what you can't see and the, the protection that's around me. And I, I, it's not a person. It's, it's something that keeps me through the hard times like homelessness. It's some, some, en some energy. I don't know what it is. It's, uh, some people call it a guardian spirit and some people call them totems. But I know there is one for me and not necessarily love, but I hang on to that belief and, and as a result, I love the other side of life too. The one regret I have is not showing the one true love of my life. Um, how much I loved her. It's self-explanatory. Everyone deserves to be loved. <laughs> yes. Unconditional love? Absolutely. Love with, with, with strings attached? I don't, I don't think so. I think that we were put on earth to help each other and most importantly, love. I know I'm falling in love when I can, I don't know, just be totally honest with someone and not be afraid of what they're going to say, how they're going to react, or, or I don't know, what they're going to think about me. It's just like, it's freedom. It's, it's awesome. Because I think everyone's been loved at some point in their life or has felt something close to it, whether it's just been helping someone out, giving someone change on the street, or 
just doing that good deed for the day, like that caring. So I think love is in different forms, definitely, and I don't think it's something that we should be questioning who deserves it or not. Nobody's perfect, as they say. I think with that in mind, you gotta learn about each other, I guess. It's a give and take, it's always give and take. I think if everybody were loved, or then the world would be such a better place, because if, if everyone were loving, then you know, so many problems fixed if everyone would just let that be. Say, my God, I'm all alone. 